In this video, I'll cover some of the features that I've included in my configuration of NeoVim for editing and using snippets, as well as a glossary. So let's open up NeoVim. And I'm going to return to the session we created previously. And let's build this document. All right. So instead of rewriting the same blocks of code over and over again, you can use a snippet which reproduces some commands that you use all the time. So to give an example of this, let's use enumerate. So you can see here in my autocomplete that it says snippet, so I know what I'm selecting. So I'm going to do control J to select that. And it populates this little window, shows me what I'm about to insert. And so let's hit that. So we'll do enter. So you can see this first field is selected and this italicizes the label. So let's change this to small caps. And then I'm going to tab to select the label. And we'll call this name. And then I'm going to tab again, and this will put me in place where I can write out some definition. OK, and let's build this. So I'm saving my document. And there we go. We have an enumerated name and the definition. OK, let's say that you like this functionality, but you want to change some things with how enumerate looks. And you don't want to have to go you know, by hand adding whatever options, whatever it is that um, you want to include over and over again. So if you go into space and then under A for actions, and then go into Edit Snippets, so S. This is all the snippets that I've included. And it's not an extremely long list. So you can see there's 200 and um, some lines. Um, there are definitely some much longer libraries of LaTeX snippets out there. Um, so you can sort through those. Um, that's what I began with. And I basically deleted everything that I don't ever use. So here we are at enumerate, and it's fairly simple syntax. Um, and so you can see we have this dollar sign and then the order. So one, two, and then zero is the last one that we're going to, the last field that we'll, we'll auto select. So let's say we want that last field to have some default text. So our definition goes here. OK, let's say I save this. OK, and then let's switch back to our document. And let's re-enter enumerate. OK, and you can see already in this little window that it has this extra bit of um, this extra line that I've added here. So let's make this bold face. And we'll call this um, second. And now when I hit tab, instead of just putting my cursor over to the right, it selects this whole bit of default text. Um, so we can replace it. OK, and let's build that. OK, good. So that's. Um, another example. Um, but I don't really need uh, that little bit of text, so I'm going to leave that off and resave my snippets. So this is a way, if you find yourself writing something out again and again, you can just create a new snippet and with a new sort of trigger. you got to make sure it doesn't have the same trigger as some other snippet you're already using. Um, but once you have that, um, you can then begin to use it. So one other thing that's worth seeing. So when you're in enumerate, it's common to create new items. Um, and so I have that under I. So if we go under I, then it will create a new item for me. So that's very convenient. 
Um, yeah, there's lots of other snippets I use, uh, really common ones. So here is uh, one of them. I will just do IT, and if I hit tab, it will auto complete, and I can say, you know, this is italics, and hit tab, and I'm on the other side of it, and hit space, and um, I'm off on my way. Okay, and then similarly, we could do boldface tab. Um, so this is bold and small caps. Um, this is small caps, etc. So lots of nice snippets there, and you can sort through what all they are, what all I've included um, already. Um, and and edit this document for yourself easily just navigating by going A and S for edit snippets. Um, it is often good to close out this document when you're done editing it, so I'm going to do that, space D, oops, um, space D. Okay, so I've closed my snippets, um, and good to do that before closing your session here so that you don't end up including the snippets file in your session. Okay, so that's a little bit about snippets. Um, let's now talk about glossaries. So if I search up for glossary, so you can see I have this commented out section for glossary. So let's uncomment this. And then I'm also gonna go down Let's return here. So what this does is it allows me to um, create a glossary. And so instead of doing that by hand, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create a new file called glossary.tech. It is important to use that name. Um, you can change the name, but you'd have to then change it up above in your preamble. All right, let's open this empty document. And then one of the templates that I have is this one, glossary. So let's add that. Okay, and so this has a whole bunch of definitions that I use over and over again. Um, and you can see to trigger them, you'd have, it's up here, Q or L um, or part and so on. Um, okay, so let's now go back to our document and let's add some um, example. So example, so let's say, and so now I'm just using the command G and you can change this if you like. And then whatever name of the glossary entry I'm gonna use over and over again. So let's say M and let's see how that looks. So there it is, it adds my M so it's a little bit easier than writing out, you know, math cal m um, over and over again. So that's nice, but um, it's also nice because now it's an official entry in your glossary. So um, let's demonstrate that by going, you can see there's this section here for glossary. Let's uncomment this. And so now we have this glossary and it's going to say, you know, model M of language of science. So I can edit that um, by going back into glossary. Let's search for um, capital M, all right. And so I might edit the description or I might edit the symbol um, or edit the name. Um, yeah, however I please. And so yeah, that's a little bit about the glossary entries. If you want to change backslash G, um, let's go back up to glossaries. Okay, so here it is. So the new command, so you might add gloss, you know, instead. So that's a little bit more to write. Backslash G works just fine for me. So that's what I've done. Um, yeah, and it does also hyperlink the page, which is convenient. Um, so just to demonstrate that, let's add a new page. And let's add a second example. Let's do G 
um, oops, let's do gr. Okay, so is the set of real numbers. Okay, and let's build that. Okay, good. So we have our first page up here where M appeared, and we have our second page where R appeared. And then you can see M, if we click there, and if we go back, you can click two. Of course, that just returns us to the page we're on, which is the second page. Um, okay, so, and I forgot, so I have regular models, not reels. But, you know, if I wanted to change this to be the reels for a different paper, then, you know, I'd have to change that in here. So um, let's do that. Yeah, there it is. So I probably have the reels in here somewhere, but, you know, I would have to change all these names around, um, change the symbol to, you know, math BB. Let's do that just to demonstrate. Okay, so if I save this, then sure enough, it changes to, um, you know, and I would change here, um, real numbers, you know, R is the, and then, yeah, accordingly. So, but I'm going to put all that back. Um, okay, that's good. So that's a little bit about how to add your glossary. If you don't actually want to print the glossary, just leave this commented out. And then you can still make uh, make use of this backslash G throughout your paper, um, which is often convenient and provides just a tidy way to keep track of all your definitions um, and yeah, use them over and over again. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, editing both your snippets and your glossary for your paper.